All right, so this will be your next project. She should not be talking because I am demonstrating right now. And I'm filming right now as well. Okay, so the next assignment that Computer Graphics 1 is doing, remember we are moving into design, right? So your rule of thirds project was design. You had to come up with the idea. You had to come up with the subject and, you know, how you were putting it all together and how you were laying it out. Most graphic design is more about layout and the idea and the thought you put into it. So what you guys are going to be doing is you're going to be doing a logo design. Um, the logo design is going to be based in your initials. So your initials. I'm Mia Amaker, so I would use M and A. And I'm going to have to combine these initials together in some way to make a simple, classy logo. So this one is a U and an L. So just the way you put letters together, you're going to make a logo the way that they combine together. Um, so you guys are going to have to use your initials, okay? And you guys are going to have to experiment. You're going to draw out a lot of sketches. You're going to figure out how to put those two initials together to make something interesting. Um, oh, sorry, so that's UL. This one's actually USN. So U and then the negative space is the S and then you've got the N here. Um, so you can use the initials, you can use the type tool in Illustrator, but you can also use negative space. I forgot about that part. Okay, a logo. You guys see them everywhere. Every single business has a logo. Every single anything that's pretty much sold has a logo. So a logo is a visual symbol associated with the product, company, or idea. It, the, the idea is when you see this picture image, you automatically know what it is, right? You know what business it is. You know what the company is. You know what they sell. You know what they do. Your logo should, your logo, not necessarily because you're just using initials you're gonna be doing an initial logo, but there's also pictorial logos. And when you look at a logo, you should be able to tell, you know, what it is the company is selling. Okay, so this one you got K2 films. So what happens with this one is the negative space is the two. The negative space is the space that's not being used. So you could use the positive space and the negative space. The positive space is the space that's being occupied by color, right? Or colored in. And the negative space is the space that's cut away. Many logos use negative space. You don't have to use negative space in your logo, but many are. So they're meant to give the product an identity, a visual appearance that people can remember. So when you see certain logos, you're like, oh, I know that company. So characteristics of a really good logo. Okay, so these things you are gonna wanna think of when you guys are doing your logo. It works well large and small, okay? Meaning you could put it on a business card or you could put it on a truck, okay? Large or small. It works well in black and white and in color. Many companies like their logos to be very powerful in black and white as well as color because color's expensive to print. So a lot of times they will want it in color, but they'll want it to be something that'll look good in black and white, bless you, because if they're doing something like mass, like um, flyers or like business cards, something like where they need a lot, it's cheaper to print in color instead of, I mean, in black and white instead of color. So you want it to work well in black and white and color. You want it to be worked in a pattern. What you guys are going to do, which means you're going to be able to repeat it, you're going to make your initial logo, and then you're going to do one in color, one in black and white, one in color, and then you're going to create a pattern with it. And that's like the whole assignment. So there's kind of like three parts to this assignment. Um, you want it to be able to get the viewer's attention, and you want it to use the letter forms in a creative way, but not destroy the letter so you can't tell what the letter is. Um, and it communicates the true character of what it represents. So you are what it's representing. So you want it to represent you. Okay, we talked about typographical logos that use letters and words, and then there's pictographic logos. Some you can use both. You're not doing a pictographic logo for this one, you're just doing a typographic logo. So typographic logo just using letters, boring, okay? 
You want to do something where maybe the, the letters overlap, connect, you can rotate the letters. <laughs> so this one's more interesting because you can read what it says, A, R, E, A, area, but the way that the A moves into the R and they all connect, it's more interesting. So you want to think about that when you're doing your letters. <laughs> even though this is a pictographic logo, even if it didn't say good sports at the bottom, what do you think this company might sell? I, I really Just by looking at sports. this. Telescopes, soccer balls. Soccer balls, maybe, right? Because this is meant to look like That's a soccer stuff. ball, I think. But then you That's add stuff. the name of the company at the bottom, you know. But a pictographic logo, you should be able to kind of maybe get an idea of what the company sells without seeing the name of the company. So this one, it makes me think of sports. It makes me think of a soccer ball. I'm kind of going past the... Yeah, this one's cute because it's it's pictographic and it's um, and it's text. So most of the time when you guys do this assignment, you will use the actual text tool in Illustrator, type out text. I'll show you how you can alter the text. Um, but sometimes people actually draw it out as letters, and that's fine too. Okay, so in your assignment, you will create a typographic logo using only your initials. <laughs> All right, so what are these initials? E. I, E. I, E, good. So the I is obvious, I right? The E might be a little bit harder to figure out because it is abstracted. So like I said, you can take the letter form and you can alter it, right? But you still want it to kind of read as that letter. So because E's have those three kind of prongs coming out, this makes sense as I, E. And notice everything is equally spaced, you know, so it's very concise. Okay, so to begin this assignment, you're going to look at your two initials. So my initials are A and M, all right? Mia Amaker, M and A. So I'm going to look at my A's, and I'm going to look at, like, all the different ways I could do this A, like the normal way that A is typed out. These are all different fonts of A, right? So I'm going to look at all these, and I'm going to choose one that I think I like, but I'm going to go even further. And I'm going to abstract them. So this A, I abstracted to a triangle, right? And it could still read as an A. Whoops. Crap. Okay. This one, I'm abstracting. The round ones, I could abstract like that. Or circle. Now, M's. So these are all different fonts of M that I could get on Illustrator. And these are all the different ways that I could abstract those. Okay, so different ways that you could present the letter A without destroying the letter form. Notice the positive negative space. In the, shh, you should not be talking. See all the negative, even though it's just two shapes, your eye kind of fills in the blank with the A. This one, the A is cut out of the block. This one, you still get the A peak and you get the cross, so it still reads as an A. The triangle still reads as an A, and that's a regular A. So you want to think about how you can abstract or change the form, but still be able to um, tell that it is an A or whatever letter you're using. Now here's M. All different ways I can alter M. Then you're going to start thinking about how you can combine these two together to make something interesting and relationships between them. So A and M. Pretty boring, but it works, right? But overlapping two can be more interesting. The triangle, you can kind of see the A and then the M is cut out of it. It makes it more interesting, right? Or attaching them in some way or rotating them or overlapping. So remember, it has to be readable. These are the things that I'm going to be judging you on, that I'm going to be grading you on. It has to be readable. It has to re represent the spirit of the product. That's kind of hard It's because it's representing you. It works well both large and small. You should be able to blow it up or have it be small. It works well in both black and white and color. So you're going to do the first one in black and white. 
Then you're going to do another one in color and you're going to lay them out together. I'll show you samples. And you want it to be able to repeat it and make it work in a pattern. And readable. Like I said, large and small. So this is large and then small, like on a business card. Black and white. What do you think that this company is selling? A book. What? A book. Good idea, but no. Anyone have any other ideas? Oh, oh wow. keyboards. Piano. No. Look at the furniture. title of it and then look at the way this is laid out. It could be furniture, but it's not furniture. But that's, that's a good guess. Definitely furniture. <laughs> any idea? Who takes um, architecture in this class? What do you think that might look like? A house. Right. Like a floor plan, right? Maybe. Okay. That's supposed to be like a tile. So if you guys have ever been in like office buildings where there's a lot of people working at different stations, they have these like cubicles that you could set up and you can transform your space <coughs> into however you want with the office space. So it's a place that sells stuff like that to kind of transform your office. But so this is black and white. You can see it. It almost looks 3D. But when you add color, you can see it a little better. It kind of pops a little bit more. So it works in both. It works in black and white and color. So you're going to want to do something like that. This one's very witty because it's just the number eight that has been cut apart to make all the letters. So I really like that one. That was really cute. And you want it to make a strong visual impact. So these are all just different typographical logos. This one I like because it's for a construction company. What it, the, it looks like there's like a tool in the middle between them. So you got the F and the S and the way that the F and S are put together, it almost looks like a, like a plumbing tool or like a wrench. So I think that that's very witty for this logo. Don't forget about using negative space. You can curve things that normally aren't curved. Attach, overlap, shh. Okay, so these are samples of ones that have been done. So you've got M, you can include your middle initial if you want to, but you don't have to. So you've got the M and the K, right? You've got M, the M is in the negative space here too. So you've got two M's, you've got the big black M, and then you've got the white M, and then you've got the K. And it's in black and white and color. You can use up to two colors for color and black and white. She decided to use one. This one's blurry, but I really like the way he used the E here. Yeah, the E is in, the B makes up the negative space in the V and kind of curves out. You also need to include your name. So you need to include your two initials and your name. Now this name was typed along a path. A lot of you guys, I showed how to do that. You can draw a line and have the text take the shape of the line. I can show you guys how to do that. Here's a couple other ones. Just to give you an idea. I think the ones that make use of the negative space, like this one, are the stronger ones. So keep that in mind when you guys are working. All right. So the other thing I just want to show you really quick. There's some examples here. Other examples. So this one I liked. Astrid Artavia, she used the two A's, she curved the A's, and she made them into a heart, which was kind of cool. This one is pretty amazing. SB. Yes, SB, but she has special permission for this because her mom was a hairdresser. Her mom's name is Samantha. Her name wasn't Samantha. And she wanted to make a business card and a logo for her mom so she could promote her hairdressing business. So I said, cool, that's fine. So what she did was pretty amazing. She made the B into scissors and she made the S into hair and it works perfectly. You can totally get it. You can totally get that this is for a hairdresser and it's elegant and it's classy. Yeah. This one is cool. I think it almost looks like a, um, like a car symbol logo, like it should be in front of the car. But what you guys are going to do is once you do your black and white and you have your color, so 
Princess Sashaka, she did the F, right? And then put the S inside the bottom of the F, right? But then you're going to take that and you're going to make a pattern with it. You can rotate the pattern. You can flip the pattern, the logo to make the pattern. But you want to put them together in a way to almost make it look like wallpaper. You want to like fit the page with the um, logo. And see how she did them so they kind of like lock into each other. So you've got this one and then it's flipped and then the F locks in. So it makes it into a very, very interesting design. So you're doing the black and white logo, you're doing the color logo, and then on another page, you're doing a pattern with your logo when you're done. Here's another pattern that I just thought was cool that I wanted to show you. So you got the K, K and the P connected, but then when, when she repeated it or he, no, it's a she. She repeated it and made them touch so they kind of keep connecting in a pattern, which was kind of cool. So these are all on Classroom for you and for you guys to look at, all right? The slideshow's on Classroom and these logo samples are on Classroom. The first thing that you are going to do